Ezekiel the son, and Pedro the father, have scattered their apiaries in the surrounding fields. That's a full tray, a full tray of honey. It's time to take them out. It's a harvest day. They take the opportunity to observe the condition of the hives. We'll see if we find the queen. Here, I have the queen. There's a story that says when a hive is orphaned by its queen, we sometimes hear babies crying. Once we were checking a hive, it seemed healthy, like those we see today, when we heard a noise like a child crying. I told my son, this hive is surely orphaned. He replied, but no, it's not possible. We looked at the hive, it was healthy, but it was orphaned. The queen was dead or she was gone. I don't know where she was. This time in the apiary, no orphaned hives, but fewer bees than before, and the honey is three times less abundant in each hive. At one time, it was one of the best places. We produced tons of honey. There were lots of animals and lots of pastures for the animals. So there were a lot of flowers for the bees. This is the first act of this story. The big problem is the arrival of soybeans. Soybean brought the spread of pesticides, and the pesticides increased the bees' mortality. Argentina has reconverted its farmland to export soybeans, a transgenic soybean sprayed with pesticide at the beginning of its growth. At this time of the year, the fields are toxic for foragers. And that's not all. Gradually, soybeans cover almost all soils, and flowers are scarce. Bees are the first victims of these choices. Hi, Pedro. Hello. How are you? Good, and you? Wait for me. I'll see you later at the house. Okay, we'll wait for you. Thanks. To plant their hives, Pedro and Ezekiel depend on landowners who give them some space for a little honey. Here, the owners still keep some pastures for the cattle. But for how long? Hola. Hello. Here we are as promised. Thank you very much. And this one is for your mother. Enjoy it. The harvest went well? Yes, good. I hope it'll be okay. There hasn't been much nectar, but we'll see. Francisco, the owner here, has only one gaucho to help take care of the animals. For them, too, the arrival of soybeans means the end of an era. Before, all you saw here was them, gauchos and cows. There are a few like him left, a real gaucho. The work with the animals, with the horses, has all changed. And the gauchos leave for that reason, because of the new crops. People go looking for work elsewhere. The ranches are done. There's no work left for the gauchos there. The harvest is finished. Pedro and Ezequiel leave for the city. That's where they'll put their honey in pots. San Nicolas de los Arroyos, literally, St. Nicholas of the Rivers. The city is settled on the banks of the Parana River, on which it depends. By the river, giant cargo ships will leave filled with soya towards China or Europe. By the river, the steel produced by the immense factory will also leave. It gives work to the inhabitants of St. Nicholas.
Pedro and Ezekiel have a modest workshop in town. To extract honey from the wax frames, they have a small machine that opens the honeycombs and makes the honey flow. In the family, beekeeping came by surprise. Pedro was a metallurgist and worked in the factory, until a crisis shook the country and deprived him of his salary. He had to change professions. Pedro became a beekeeper. At first it was just a way to make money. But then beekeeping captures you. We developed little by little. I remember that I started with six hives, and then my son joined me. I'm happy with what I accomplished. What fills me with pride is to have sown a seed. Thanks to your work. I was born in 1979. I went through all the stages of the profession. I know them all. My father taught me everything he knew. So there you have it. Here we are today. But will this family history last for long? While the countryside changes and the pesticides kill the bees? Once a year, you have to flee. Go where nature is intact. In the Delta Islands, Tomorrow, Pedro and Ezekiel will transport some of their hives there. They must cross the Parana, and the river is less tranquil than it seems. One does not venture there without precautions. How's the water level? We'll check just in case. Let's see. The level's gone up. Yes, it's going up. It's been up for a week now. It means that in 30 or 40 days we'll have a high level here in San Nicolas. So are we going or not with this weather? Yes, of course. Okay, we're going then. <laughs>